Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here once again on this, uh, what is it, Thursday night, August 17th, 2023. It's about 10.34 p.m. here, California time. And uh, latest activity looks like a 2.8 into the region of Texas. All right, looking at the uh, west coast here, we did see some activity just off the coast here of Northern California. Actually, it looks like it is on land or underneath this area. Notice the... Uh, the depth of these magnitudes here very consistent with the cascadia subduction zone so we did see a 4.1 31 kilometers deep here into this area now that's above the trimmer area but in the locked zone where the stress tends to build up the most and uh, that's yeah, definitely right there at the southern end of the cascadia uh, also seen a little little bit of uh i guess if you want to call it aftershock activity a 2.1 and a 2.0 following that four pointer earlier this afternoon uh, noticing a slight increase here across the coast range of northern california keep an eye on that also the bay area showing a little bit of seismic uptick as well uh southern california a little spotty activity here just uh north of the fraser park area this is a pretty sensitive area for terms of plate dynamics you got the san andreas fault here in the dark red line that's the plate boundary and uh the garlock fault shear zone this is a uh, separate fault kind of runs uh oh opposite of what the san andreas fault does so uh, pretty sensitive area in terms of the stress that can build up here uh, i did see a 3.4 earlier this afternoon along with a couple other smaller quakes uh, one earthquake up here in the last hour uh, 2.0 up there uh, north of ridgecrest area Southern California, extreme Southern California, gearing up for the hurricane or tropical storm by the time it gets there uh, early Monday morning. We'll talk about the uh, hurricane potential here towards the end of this update video. Uh, but looking at a 0.9 on the San Andreas Fault or just off of it, north of Desert Hot Springs. And a couple other smaller quakes out there. Looks like maybe a swarm around the Rancho Cucamonga area, but mostly smaller quakes, about five to six kilometers deep. Uh, out into the Nevada area in the Great Basin, had a 3.0 near Eureka, Nevada, earlier this afternoon. Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet. We're not seeing too much activity. It looks like a handful of smaller quakes, though, across the Mount St. Helens area throughout the day today. Uh, let's double-check the Cascadia Subduction Zone Trimmer map tonight see what we have. 71 epicenters of Trimmer, not a big count whatsoever. We're still uh, kind of quiet in terms of the Trimmer activity now. Hard to say if that's good news or bad news. A lot of times, uh, I think when we see more trimmer, that's the uh, slow slip event occurring downstream, that would add stress uh, further to the locked area. But the question is how, you know, how much uh, stress is built up here? Uh, is it capable of producing any more trimmer? Or is it just gonna decide to do the big one here one day soon? You never know. Uh, 323 years since the last 9.0 earthquake here off the coast of the Pacific Northwest. So we'll watch that pretty closely. Uh, let's see the rest of the country out here. A little spotty activity across Colorado. There's that earthquake activity in Texas. It looks Yorktown, it looks like. 2.8, five kilometers deep out here in, you guessed it, the oil fields. We're talking about massive oil fields out there. Satellite image. Let me show you guys real quick what this looks like. Those are uh, quite a bit. Thousands upon thousands of them, and uh, where this earthquake struck here, looks like there's a couple in the vicinity. Either way, earthquake activity popping up there today. Uh, up here into the Indiana area, looks like the border of Illinois and Indiana, 2.4 uh, earlier this morning. The rest of the country, though, fairly quiet. Here's the Caribbean plate. We did see some activity here across the Columbia area with a 6.3 and a 5.7, literally within minutes of each other. Uh, we did see a little further adjustment within the same region there. A couple uh, further aftershocks, I guess you could call them, uh, there in the uh, Columbia area. So we'll continue to watch that. I don't think we've seen anything uh, further down south. Looks pretty quiet there across the Prue-Chile Trench, according to the USGS. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, prior to that uh, quake there in the South America region, had a 6.0 in the central mid-Atlantic ridge. Doesn't look like we've seen anything else popping off there today about the only one a little bit of activity out here off the coast of italy uh 2.8 look at that usgs reporting a 2.8 
All right. Rest of the Mediterranean uh, looks pretty quiet, but we know that's not the case. The EMSC model showing a handful of smaller quakes across the area. A lot of this, though, looks like it's from yesterday. Uh, minimal movement across the Java Trench, 4.9. Pretty deep earthquake over here across the region. Um, north of the Gulf of Tomini. Is that right? Hopefully, outside the Maluka Sea region, 4.9, 190 kilometers deep. Some deeper activity occurring there. Also, up here into the Izu Trench, 440 kilometers deep, 4.9, just off the coast of Japan. But this is a subduction zone, so uh, that could enhance potential for further activity across the East China Sea. The general plate movement moves off here in the northwestern direction. Uh, if there's enough strain over here, if not, then we'll watch for some further surface activity up here at the subduction zone level where it, uh, where it starts to subduct there at the Izu Trench. Kurokamachaka Trench, pretty quiet. Getting a cluster of earthquake activity still across the Tonga area. The latest quake, though, 4.5 into the Loyalty Islands. Kind of makes sense, right? All this deeper activity putting strain up here across the plate boundary. And we expect that to continue. Solomon Islands, for the most part, has been... Uh, uh, relatively quiet, so we'll continue to watch this region here for some further movement. Um, New Zealand, let me go over here to New Zealand real quick and just double check. I know we got a little bit of earthquake activity out there. Uh, 4.7 earthquake, South Island, about four hours ago. Um, let's see if anybody felt that. I'm sure they did. Looks like, uh, well, at least 34 people reported some weak to light shaking. They're across the extreme south area of South Island, New Zealand, and I'm sure that showed up pretty nicely across the earthquake drums. We'll double check that uh, real quick. Not a whole lot there in North Island, but as you can see, the further we get down on the list, closer to the South Island area, that four-pointer shows up pretty nicely. And it looks like there was a prior earthquake, um, or an earthquake prior to that, maybe a foreshock there, a much smaller quake. That almost looks like a, maybe a two or a three but uh, continue to watch that. All right, uh, let's see what else we have. The Big Island of Hawaii, Kilauea Volcano. Anything going on out there? Looks like a decrease in earthquake activity for now, 2.0, near uh, the uh, volcano here, the Kilauea Volcano, south of the crater area. Looks like about two kilometers deep. The uh, latest informational statement here, let me double check that here from the, uh, whoops, wrong website. Again, <laughs> two times in a row. Uh, HVO here, Kilauea Daily Update that was put out earlier today. The volcano there on the Big Island is not erupting. Uh, looks like Kilauea Summit is currently exhibiting signs of elevated unrest. But you notice the earthquake activity is kind of backed off here. Um, so I'm not for sure if, uh, if this is going to start back up or not. We'll check out the recorded seismograph here in a little bit. Looks like they fired back up their YouTube channel there for the um, live view of Kilauea Volcano, the western lava lake area. Now let's go over and check out the live seismograph stations. Well, at least the recorded ones here. Kind of want to see if there is earthquake activity, but just not being reported. So we can check any one of these seismograph stations. For the most part, they work. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um... UTC time 2300 is that right there's some earthquake activity occurring right now at, at the uh, Big Island see that earthquake coming in there uh, Cone Peak and the Hawaii Digital Station maybe a two or a three coming in uh, this data is old very old looks like about six hours old to be exact I'm not for sure what's going on with it let me get rid of some of these uh, other things maybe it might just be limited to that one station i clicked on that one's obviously not working right um this says the past 12 hours but it only goes to 2300 utc time now i know it's not 12 in the afternoon on the big island it's 10 o'clock here 10 30 almost 11 o'clock in california i know we don't have that much of a time slip um, so it looks like they've lost the data out here as far as the, um, the reporting goes. Uh, we'll have to check back on that maybe tomorrow. 
I find that a little strange. Let's see if this one's correct. Uh, this one looks offline too. See that? So we'll check back on that tomorrow morning, but uh, definitely some earthquake activity popping up right now. Let's see here what they're reporting. Doesn't look like it's kicked up yet. Well, let's see here, 2201. No, that's gonna be that two pointer. This here, this earthquake coming into the Hawaii area is very local to the Kilauea volcano and uh, doesn't look like they picked up on it yet, but we'll continue to check back on that here. Uh, the Alaska area, most of the movement across the Aleutian Trench, generally mi uh, light microquake activity, although north of Anchorage, a 3.2 coming in. Uh, looks like uh, that's off of the, um, this fault system right here, the Castle Mountain Fault. Nothing big, but still, uh, it's an active region. Uh, let's see here. Anything else going on? That I think, uh, well, I think that's about it. Uh, let's go ahead and check out space weather real quick. Then we'll cover um, hurricane activity. Seems to be the big thing right now. Space weather activity? Well, that's a little different story. Looks like we did see a little sea flare activity, but look right here. We have slipped down below the sea flare threshold. That uh, means that activity is at a very low minimum. Let's look at the latest magnetogram image here of the sunspots. There's numerous sunspots out here, but notice a lot of separation going on here. Without that closeness going on, there's no special spark, the solar flare, so to, so to speak. And uh, that looks like it's going to be the uh, story here amongst all of these sunspots for the coming days, unless we get something coming around the eastern limb, but I just... It's hard to tell right now. There is a little bright feature out here way out on the eastern limb of the sun. We'll continue to watch, though. So looks a lot brighter than all the activity we have currently facing the Earth. Uh, shows 99% chance for a C flare. M flare, M flare at 15, X flare at 5. These are a little bit overblown. No major roars forecasted, so things pretty quiet there. All right, hurricane activity. What do we got here for um, the hurricane? Let's go ahead and check it out real quick. I thought I had it pulled up. Hill, uh, Hurricane Hillary is kind of a big deal right now. Uh, pretty big topic, so to speak. I want to go over here to the latest information here from the National Hurricane Center and the Central Pacific Hurricane Center here. Currently as 9 p.m. This is a couple hours old. This should up. Well, this should update here soon. They, they've been updating, it seems like, every three hours. But I think as it get, gets closer possibly uh, they'll update every hour but that's all dependent on the strength it looks like they did add a hurricane watch here to a portion of the baja california area that's going to be in the pink it looks pink here on this end right there at the um, just off the coast here or right on the coast of the baja california region the rest of the area remains in the tropical storm watch in the yellow and then a tropical storm warning in the blue so right now the main thing is the hurricane watch We've got to watch out there because uh, that will be a close call right now 125 mile per hour sustained winds makes it a category three hurricane very strong it is continuing to spin up and uh look pretty dynamic i do have the live stream up and running of um for the uh, hurricane hillary Let's go over here and check out, see if we can find the um, satellite view real quick. I've got a couple different ones. Here's the uh, Eastern Pacific. There's some type of tropical development off in the Pacific, but we're watching this one right here. Got a well-defined eye. You guys see that? Absolutely beautiful eye feature there. Let's see if I can zoom this in a little bit. I could probably find a, a closer image, but... Uh, that is looking very dynamic. I have a feeling, though, in our latest update, it'll probably be well above 125, 130 miles an hour sustained winds. Um, it's definitely gaining some steam. How powerful this will be when it hits Southern California remains to be seen. Let's go ahead and check out uh, a couple other uh, things here. Uh, right now, here is the U.S. rainfall potential. Now, this is the uh, accumulated precipitation here from uh, the hurricane. This would be through uh, the 5 p.m. time period there on Tuesday, August 22nd. 
looks like still some areas uh, getting upwards of potentially six inches of rainfall, maybe more. You notice that gap here between six and 10, so it could be locally higher up to around eight inches maybe. I'm not seeing any specific 10 inches of red. Well, maybe kind of hard to tell in certain areas. Maybe in Nevada, look at that. That's gonna be some major flash flooding out there. Uh, but either way, this is no joke. It's not something to downplay. Um, there's going to be some big time flooding out here uh, locally within these um, within these bands. This model right here shows it taking a more southeastern turn with barely clipping Los Angeles. It looks like maybe San Diego will get a good portion of it. Uh, but we'll continue to watch that. Here's the flash flooding potential. They're at least 40% around the Salton Sea area, 29 Palms, Southern California area. Uh, but a good portion, as you can see here in Southern California, is in the slight category for flash flooding. Um, the current, like I said, the current warnings out here, there is the um, Hurricane Watch right here in the pink. Nothing up here yet, but they normally do it, uh, they issue that watch here about 48 hours prior to arrival. Remember, today's Thursday. We still got Friday, Saturday, Sunday before the expected um, arrival there in Southern California sometime Monday morning. Uh, this is 6 p.m. Sunday, still roughly around the Baja California area. Sometime late Sunday night, early Monday morning will be the landfall for the Southern California area. By then, tropical storm, potentially tropical depression. We'll have to see, though see how this plays out i you know let's let's check out a couple weather models here and see what um see what they're forecasting i do like to uh check up on these we're going to go check out the western united states here and remember there's going to be thunderstorm activity being pulled up prior to the uh even to the arrival of the hurricane right there look at that big time rain already ahead of the hurricane and that's like way down here hundreds of miles south of southern california but just goes to show you how much moisture is associated with this now this weather model here notice that this is just one weather model the gfs model showing uh los angeles area uh getting a whopping with an eyefall area it looks like around san diego now this one here is a little bit more west and more aggressive in terms of the potential for rainfall out here not only across the Salton Sea area uh, where you know that main flash flooding threat is but much further up into Los Angeles and uh, maybe uh, Tehachapi area as we put this into motion there you can see all that rainfall being pulled up with it uh, into the Southern California area and this is actually interesting here too because that is more aggressive for northern california too bringing some rainfall up um, into the sacramento valley lasting for a little bit looks like so some decent accumulation uh, so this is you know this is almost i would call this a, a historic event big time historic event uh, it's been what 80 years since the last tropical system hit southern california we've had you know some remnants of hurricanes and tropical storms but an actual named storm making it um, to the Southern California area is, is a little rare. And I'm pretty certain, um, I think I'm right on that. Um, let me double check here. Um, Just want to double check so the most recent was an unnamed tropical storm back in 1939 uh noah records show before that the san diego hurricane made landfall in 1858 so that was an official hurricane back in 1858 uh, california's only hurricane on record was back in 1858 so we'll see if hillary can't uh you know redo that record it, well over uh, well over 100 years um, 1997, Nora was the last and only other tropical storm to maintain its status. So 1997 was the last time a tropical storm hit the uh, California area. So we'll see how this plays out. Maybe a hurricane, maybe a tropical storm. Uh, I don't see it getting 
degraded or squashed until it gets further up into Southern California area. So this is going to be a rather interesting event, I must say. And um, I'm looking to get a live view potential. Somebody's webcam, uh, maybe a potential um, trail cam that's capable of viewing live. Uh, got a couple folks offering me that um, that view down there around Southern California. I do plan on adding that live view, of course, with, with permission to the live stream, uh, which we're currently um, performing two live streams right now, the, this Earthquake 3D stream and the Hurricane Hillary live stream, which is also on this channel. Right now, we're just showing relevant data, satellite, and the latest information there from the Hurricane Center. But I do plan on adding a live view um, onto that stream as this hurricane gets closer to Southern California. So that's still in the mix. Mix. Um, if you have access there, maybe to a webcam there on your on your property or or um, whatnot, uh, maybe give me an email and we'll chat. See if. Uh, You'd be willing to let us uh, view it on the uh, live stream, but either way, check that out, folks. That's a uh, that's a whopper. Now, wind speeds here. Let's check out wind speeds. Winds are another one. Let me go over here to the windy app. That's a all right, windy. Let's go check the wind on windy. Gonna bring up the wind gust here. There, there it is out there in the uh, Pacific. That's showing certain areas showing 95 miles an hour, but it's showing 125 sustained. Uh, this is just, I'm thinking, maybe maybe an estimate. Okay, Friday, Saturday, notice a broader area of circulation here. Sunday, that looks like a, it's showing a lot weaker than what uh, some models are showing, a little bit more disorganized. But by the time it gets into the Southern California area, right about here, these are maybe some of your expected wind gusts. Uh, here's area of circulation right around Los Angeles, it looks like. And no doubt it's going to bring in some winds, 49 miles per hour, which would make it a tropical um, depression, I believe. I don't think that's tropical storm, maybe. Um, but either way, as that works its way up into California, it's going to bring with it quite a bit of rain, quite a bit of wind there for Southern California. And up here in Northern California, we'll be feeling a little, little bit of it. Uh, but that's all definitely... Um, subjective here to the weather models you know which one's going to be right which one's going to be wrong you know this one here the gfs model is showing more of a aggressive pull to the north um not quite scooting off here into nevada as soon as it hits southern california it's going to be pulling lots more moisture up towards los angeles and Bakersfield area, I mean, California could get a, a nice soaking here. Even Northern California stretching all the way up in Oregon. So this, you know, we'll have to watch this and see how this plays out. There's a couple different uh, factors at play here. Uh, let me go back to the Western states and let's see what we got. Where's that high pressure system at? I know it's uh, got to be parked right here. I'm not seeing it on the map though. It looks like if you follow the rest of the moisture there, either way, it's, you know, we're gonna be covering this every day, twice a day until this plays out. So either way, Southern California, um, this isn't backing down. It's not pulling off into the Pacific. There's no, I don't think there's any chance of that. This is uh, the path that it's gonna take. How far north and west is uh, still on the menu? We'll have to check that out as uh, time goes on. We'll definitely uh, provide updates out here. Let me check out the rainfall uh, predicted rates here again. Precipitation, total accumulated precipitation. Now this is from the GFS, GFS model right there. This is still showing some decent rain in the nor uh, Northern California, maybe maybe half an inch to an inch up here where I live. Down south, Southern California area, still got that main threat down here across the Salton Sea, and that's right over the San Andreas Fault. It's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out with the uh, stress out there on the plate boundary with all this water uh, coming your way. It still shows here certain areas, maybe eight inches, nine inches or so. 
and this is just one weather model showing that you got that uh, type of um, rainfall forecast coming from the uh, the National Hurricane Center as well mostly confined though to the um, to the Salton Sea area and surrounding areas here but uh, Los Angeles area looking at maybe three to five inches or so of rainfall um, going to be a big deal folks that's for sure so we'll continue to watch this continue to monitor it um, let me check out and see what the windy has for the rain accumulation out here now thunderstorms is going to be an interesting one hold on a second this one thing I found out when I was when I've been out chasing hurricanes is that it's mostly just rain and wind you know the convective part there's really not a whole lot and it doesn't really even show that maybe Monday into Northern California um, but I'm uncertain on to if this is going to be a you know a whole bunch of lightning and thunder and rain and wind um, with this hurricane it may just be a lot of moisture a lot of downpours let's go over here and check the rain accumulation here again across the area next three days next five days I think that should cover yep next five days uh, let's see what these guys are reporting here Again, right around Salton Sea area, 5.3 inches of rain. Los Angeles area, at least some, somewhere up in the mountains, maybe four inches uh, along the coastline, three inches or so. And this is all, again, just an estimate of what this computer model is showing. And this one here, the ECMWF model, this is the model that's taking the hurricane and mostly trending it to the east northeast as you see nevada getting hit northern california not so much so gfs model showing a more uh, western motion here bringing that hurricane up further uh, to the west and north of course by then it's going to be you know a tropical depression if that uh, but still providing rainfall for northern california but keeping the heavy amount here around the um salt and sea area it just seems to where where the brunt of the moisture is going to be but either way some of these models are definitely super aggressive in terms of uh the flooding potential out there uh, you know it's a definitely a big deal guys make sure you have everything set up and ready to go generators and uh extra food extra water you never know how long the power is going to be out uh definitely something to uh be prepared for don't get caught off guard Again, uh, live stream is running on the Hillary uh, Hurricane live stream. I got the latest data up there. It's updating every 15 minutes or so. Uh, so I'll continue to run that through the duration. Uh, in the meantime, we'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow. And we'll cover this again, see what the weather models look like for a Friday. Remember, this is a couple days out still, but all models still showing. Every, almost every single model there showing a Southern California hit. So that's a guarantee. How much? How far north? How far east? Remains to be seen. We'll cover that, of course, as the uh, time goes on. We'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow morning. Have a good one.